a warm welcome to uh, all the viewers especially for those who will be seeing this uh, interview come conversation today with a very very illustrious personality dr parakala prabhakar uh, who uh, is a pass out alumni of uh, jnu a very prestigious institution and furthermore a phd uh, holder from the london school of economics he is a political economist uh, an author uh, and so many feathers in his caps recently he has added much more feathers in his caps uh, not just one cap but several caps by now uh, that he has openly come out and uh, written a book which talks about if you would have read this book or even heard about it the crooked timber of new india uh, uh, essays on a republic in crisis so he's been he's been someone who's very outspoken very candid about his observations as uh, an economist as an academician uh, as a person who has knowledge uh, about economics um today dr parakala prabhakar i wanted to address certain issues with you which are youth oriented and this is one group that uh, has been uh, you know by far quite ignored although they are one of the biggest sufferers under this regime uh, of modi and bharatiya janata party so we want to address today a decade of broken dreams um and this regime has certainly given rise to the youth wasting away so my first question to you today is that pm narendra modi in 2014 and the run up to the lok sabha election campaign in 2014 he had widely campaigned on the promise of creating 2 crore jobs per annum um but what we witnessed ever since is the complete opposite of that so whether it is a uh, loss of jobs through selling of psus or the destruction of the msc se- msme sector entirely through demonetization and gst or not filling the lacks of jobs in the government sector this entire decade in a nutshell has been a decade of broken promises and broken dreams for the youth of india what are your observations about this phenomenon dev thank you very much for uh, having me um since you said uh, you know we we speak to the younger audience i'm quite excited because it is they who have to carry forward this uh you know people like me our uh, runway ahead of us is very limited very short we had a long runway behind us so and people who are younger now in their 20s maybe 30s they have a much longer uh, runway ahead of them and they'll have to live and see and reap the kind of things that are happening the results of you know what is happening now and the most important uh, crisis that we face today in our economy and in our polity is the crisis of uh, livelihoods let me put it that way not just the government jobs government jobs are anyway going to be limited whoever wants to you know fill those that's going to be limited but the large uh, employment opportunities are in the you know the general livelihoods uh, that is possible only if our young people are you know skilled educated and employable and the economy is configured in such a way that you know it not only generates growth but it also generates jobs because in a country like india which has a huge uh, labor component um jobless growth is very very counterproductive so you need to have yes. a, a, a growth strategy oriented towards creating jobs not just the growth we will come to that a little later you know what is happening in the economy uh that is one and then for that to happen is that you need to have a lot of investment in a in a proper way then you need to have uh, the rural distress to be completely eliminated or considerably reduced agriculture should be profitable and you know it should generate a lot of, a lot of income so that they can employ a lot of people 
these are the four or five things that the government will have to take uh, into account and pay attention to. But what is happening now? You know, whatever the government has done and whatever kind of a growth figures that they're showing, which are, of course, contestable, are the following. One is the, you know, a tremendous growth of inequality in India. The inequality, World Inequality Lab had come out and said, it's, it's a very prestigious uh, lab run by uh, a very eminent economist uh, by name Thomas Piketty. Uh, some people uh, pronounce him as Thomas Piketty because his French is Thomas Piketty, you understand. Uh, Thomas Piketty, they, their uh, group had uh, uh, found that uh, between 1923 and 2023, that's 100 years, this last 10 years are a historical maximum of inequality. In other words, I mean, to, to, to put it concretely, 1% of our population corners about 22% of the national income. And 1% wow. of our population owns and controls about 40% of our national assets. This is the is the is the is the kind of inequality, and then, then comes the youth unemployment. You know, the ILO report had said of all the people who are unemployed in India, eighty-three percent of them are young people, and of that eighty-three percent, sixty-three percent are educated young people. Now, you can imagine that. Wow. And then if you look at uh, where do we stand globally, globally, Dave, we are, you know, uh, having one of the highest youth unemployment rates in India. That is at 24%. Now, 24%, wow. we are in the company of uh, countries like Iran, uh, Lebanon, you know, Armenia, and Yemen, Syria, Syria, you know, they 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 are not the economies that 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 boast about uh, you know fastest growing economy, fifth largest economy. They're not, and a small neighbor like Bangladesh has just half of our youth unemployment. That is twelve percent. Wow. And I don't have to tell you about, uh, you know, for 35,000 jobs announced by the railways in 2022, 1 crore 25 lakh people, young people have applied for it. Look at the ratio. And, you know, our yeah. young people are prepared to go to Gaza, they're prepared to go to Ukraine, to do whatever jobs that, that come by their, uh, you know, way. That is the kind of severe unemployment that young people of India face today. And, uh, you know, our, uh, our uh, labor participation ratio is also on the decline. So all these put together, they, all these factors are putting a lot of pressure on our young people. And what about those people who are, you know, educated and many, many uh, firms and companies, they say, look, they are not only unemployed, but they are unemployable because they don't have proper skills. And all this talk about yes. skill India has gone nowhere, which means that the government, although it announces, you know, very catchy slogans and programs with catchy titles like Skill India, Stand Up India, you know, Kelo India, and, and all that, Make in India, and all that. But, you know, after the inauguration, after the grand gala uh, thing is over, and the next day morning, newspapers and televisions carry huge headlines and all that, it's forgotten. So, so yes. much so, so much so that, uh, you know, forget about two crore jobs. Still now, in the election campaign, the ruling party is asking for a renewal of their mandate. They have not even able to say how much jobs they have created. The Prime Minister don't, doesn't talk about youth, doesn't talk about uh, uh, you know, employment, doesn't talk about industry, doesn't talk about anything. He just talks about you know what. That is the... Well, funnily of... enough, 
Yeah, I'll just interject here and share with you that someone had actually asked a question in Parliament as to how many j jobs that this government has been able to uh, provide in, or create in the last 10 years. The answer that came uh, was 721,000. Yes. So instead of yes. the projected 20 crore yes. jobs that should have been created as per Modiji's promise, uh, only 721,000 have been created, which now brings me to the second question. So the flip side of, you know, the unemployment uh, that you've been talking about, one of the most overlooked phenomenon uh, in our country right now is how severely inflation uh, has affected our youth and their education, higher education, their lifestyle, uh, their ability to lead, lead their lives of their choice, you know, because survival has taken center stage for the majority of our youth. So we are looking at very high rates of rural and urban poverty amongst the youth and which is palpable with the fact that, uh, you know, people my age, I'm 32 years old, people my age and younger than me, uh, we are literally just one health crisis away from becoming bankrupt. So what are your observations in this regard? You know, inflation is very high. Um, let's not, uh, you know, get into these, uh, you know, percentages and things like that. We'll come to that later. That's also very important. But the point is this. The point is, uh, you know, um, you don't look at the government figures of 6.7, 7.2, 5.8 .7 and 4.3 and all that kind of thing. I want people like you to go to a shop and buy things. And I do that. Therefore, um, you know, I know what is the what was the price in December of say dal and you know chawal and sugar and, and things like that, and what they are in the, the beginning of this month, because I, I went again and I go and pick up my own vegetables. So every week I have a report in my hand. I mean, how much did I spend? <laughs> Or before that or before that and, and this week this is one way of looking at it because you know that is what matters what matter what doesn't matter is you know what the economic times or financial times or mint or, or you know some kind of a pink paper uh, publishes as the government version that doesn't matter much because you see the in order to you know give out the figure of inflation they have a basket of uh, commodities in which a lot of things yeah. are but most of them are not relevant to my day-to-day -day life. My day-to-day -day life revolves around how much do I buy my rice for, how much do I buy my dal for, how much do I buy my sugar for, how much do my do I buy for my vegetables for. These are the things that matter, which is food inflation. And then, as you said, what matters to me is my education influence, inflation. How much are my fees? Then, what matters is my medical inflation. Health inflation. You know, can I really afford go and get myself treated? As you said, you're just one uh, uh, illness away from bankruptcy. That's the kind of uh, situation we are in because you know they they are they, they have a very high inflation. You know, for instance, you know, pulses you have about twenty seven percent inflation. Don't don't be misled by about six point seven 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 point two four point five five point eight. You know, don't get into that. What is the food inflation? What is health inflation? What is education inflation? These are the things that matter to a person like me and you. And of course, the young people, because, you know, their parents who are the providers so far, if they are not employed, you know, th that matters. Now, Dave, let, let's look at our day-to-day -day experience. Now, you know, a few years ago, when I went to a, 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 a visit a family, they used to come in because they, they, they knew that, you know, I, I would prefer a coffee in the morning and a tea in the afternoon. They would, they would you know, automatically come and give me a, either a coffee or a, or a tea. But these days, mm. ask me, would you like to have coffee? Would you like to have coffee? Two or three times. Because, you know, it's, it's so difficult for them. One cup of coffee means, you know, milk and sugar and uh, some coffee powder or tea powder. You know, these things are quite expensive now you know you just can't you know yes. give anybody who, who who enters your house you're very very uh cautious about it 
that's what has made uh, you know our and you know uh, the 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 reserve bank of india the lead uh, monetary policy committee also did not revise the repo rate in the reverse repo rate because they are not confident yeah. that uh, the inflation you know rate is not in the safe zone yet so notwithstanding what the government says you know what uh, the political party which is ruling the country says we are not in a safe zone as far as the headline inflation is concerned and we are in a very very dangerous zone as far as the food inflation education inflation health inflation etc etc which impinge on our day to day lives that is what what is the situation now okay um my third question to you as a result of the rampant unemployment rate under this regime which you also mentioned the figure from ILO uh, the international labor organization they pegged it at 65.7% uh, which as you rightly pointed out no, is 83% of no, the no, entire you know that with the 63 64% is the educated youth unemployed ha huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, one more thing, I, will tell you, a, I told you about twenty-four percent. One minute, Dave. I wanted. I told you about twenty-four percent of the uh, of the youth unemployment, which is very high. One of the five figures in the world. But then, if you slightly disaggregate that, you know, the people who are between twenty and twenty-five, for them, the unemployment rate is about forty-four percent. Wow. Okay. Wow. I was not aware. No wonder. So that's where my question is going to stem from. That you know, due to these abnormally uh, high levels of unemployment, we are seeing an increase in an abnormal increase in antisocial behavior, drug, severe drug usage, alcoholism. Uh, and wasting away of an entire generation and i can share an example with you from goa that you know uh, we we've heard that 70000 kgs of drugs which were seized from adani's court which were confiscated and they were there in storage that 70000 kgs of drugs went missing and then on the flip side in goa uh, there's been a recent report where the drugs have reached the most rural and the most remotest villages in goa so is there a connection in all of this you know is there a larger jigsaw puzzle where does all this fit in and are our youth being groomed to become cannon fodder for you know whatsapp university and divisive politics indeed it's very worrying you know one is the the rise of uh, increase in the drug abuse the other one i'll come to that the other one uh, you know which is uh, which is causing a lot of concern is that you know if you look at the ncrb data national crime records bureau data by the ministry of home affairs government of india the highest number of suicides are in the following three categories one is young people second is farmers the third is self employed now you can you can make out what it means one the second thing is that you know there's a lot of desperation among the youth what do they do after they finish uh, schooling college or you know if, if they're not uh, uh, lucky enough to go to school and college and all that what do they do because you know, they they cannot be gainfully employed so there is a lot of uh, disappointment in their lives and despondency in their lives you know we boasted about uh, demographic dividend a while ago remember some years ago we used to talk <laughs> today we used to talk about demographic dividend 53% of our country's population is young people now if they are not harnessed yes. properly what is the point in having uh, young people you know of, of that magnitude and if they, if they're not gainfully employed and if they don't have incomes you know they get frustrated they're desperate to they turn to drugs they turn to crime or 
you know, they wallow in the kind of propaganda that they consume over their WhatsApp university and things like that. You know, we used to be great in thousands of years ago. We should, you know, instead of looking at future, they they are encouraged to look back and, you know, somehow or the other satisfy themselves that, you know, <laughs> our uh, very, very wonderful, you know, that kind of a thing. So, as you said, uh, cannon fodder, uh, something like that in the sense, you know, they become, uh, you know, the ribbon and, you know, tika and uh, trishul kind of a thing, you know. They, they, <laughs> and, you know, the, the, the regime's leaders, they and their children are very secure, safe. They are in foreign universities. They, they are they're, <laughs> they're well healed. But, you know, the, yeah. the high colloy and, you know, the uh, hewers of wood and uh, uh, carriers of water, drawers of water, they are the ones who are into these kind of things. So that is happening here in India on a very large scale. And that is a very, very serious cause for concern. Indeed, it's a. Uh, I I find it extremely heartbreaking that you know uh, a, a population dividend of a country like ours, which which you pointed out, fifty three percent of our population is young. Uh, that entire human resource is completely being wasted, uh, and it's wasting away. It's they're not gainfully employed. They don't have a direction about their future, or no avenues of getting gainfully employed. So what do they do? They turn to uh, basically different ways of escapism, whether it is through drugs, through drinks, through committing crimes, through even peddling drugs or getting involved, uh, you know, in uh, communal uh, strifes, you know, or becoming part of the cause of communal strifes. They've so my next question. Also, communalism is also a sort of. Yes. Drug. Of course it is. Of course, <laughs> it gives you a sense of false purpose, doesn't it? Now, my next question uh, is uh, India, specifically in the north, uh, has been mired in a series of paper leaks, scams. We've seen crores of applicants, as you pointed out, for a few thousand jobs, not once, but many times over in this past decade. And we see the growing desperation in the youth, which has now taken the form of, you know, violent protests, uh, destruction of public property and assets. Agnivir scheme and the whole protest following that is the prime example or the biggest example of this. Would you want to be a youth in today's time? Very frankly asking you. No, not at all. I'm 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 uh, lucky. I feel very happy that I'm uh, I'm so lucky that you know I've uh, grown up uh, when I was a young person in a different India. You know, I'll tell you why. You know, it's, it's, it's not to say that you know past is always great and you know not the present and the future. It's not that. I don't get into that kind of a thing. I'm a, I'm a I, I look forward to and uh, you know I I have a lot of uh, hope for the future, but. My hope is not a blind hope that, you know, at any rate, the future is going to be great. No, I, I believe in human agency that we need to steer the future. We need to steer the present and go take it forward to a, a desirable, good future. The reason why I said, you know, I, I, I really feel that I'm lucky to have uh, grown up, you know, when I grew up, when I was a young person, is that, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I studied in a, in a municipal school. A municipal school. Oh wow! Yes, and uh, I remember my father at that time. He was an MLA. Maybe I think yeah, the first time MLA he was. Um, he took me to the municipal school and he joined me there and uh, he admitted me there and you know, I, I I studied there, and which would have cost nothing, isn't it? Nearly nothing, yeah. except you know, and then. Um, I joined uh, my then, of course, my higher uh, secondary. I went to a mission high school in my hometown. My parents used to walk and come back and again for a pittance. Mm -hmm. Then I went to a, a, a college again, very, very small fees. And then I went to JNU again, a very, very small fees. And then I had a, a scholarship to go to the London School of Economics. And again, you know, 
Now, even to admit a young toddler in a preschool or pre-nursery or a nursery, you know, it's, it's, it costs you a fortune, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. The, the second thing is our lives were simple and uh, we didn't have so much of a differentiation. You know, I belong to this religion, they belong to that religion. You know, that kind of a, uh, discrimination, etc. were not in our uh, ecosystem then. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you know, uh, we, we were not, uh, when, 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 when people of my age, uh, when they were employed, they were not drawing up, uh, seven figure 10 figure salaries but they were comfortable they were all right and you know somebody who studied uh, they they there were a lot of public sector undertakings if they're technical you know they're government jobs and they were slowly the private sector was coming up and there were jobs um you know really nearly once you know maybe somebody is uh, not employed and you know going on looking at employment news and your newspapers and advertisements and all that for a year or so but then we we came to know that you know they, they got jobs somewhere Banks were and all that kind of thing. So this was happening, and uh, I'm not I'm not prepared to say that it was the golden period. I'm not saying that, but then, you know, we did not have so much of a deprivation and so much of a, you know pressure on us, um, our parents and families. You know, how do I educate the particular person, my son, my daughter? Where do I send? You know, we don't we didn't have that kind of a thing. So in yeah. that way, in that way, I think uh, if if I were to if you if you give me a chance now a choice, would you want to be a young person now in under these circumstances? I'm sorry, no. Okay, I hear you answer loud and clear, and I would like to add to that, like having children nowadays, uh, or you know, even deciding to have a child, uh, it has become such a prohibitive idea because looking at the scenario uh, as it is right now it's it's unimaginable to bring up a child and uh, give a proper education uh, you know and be able to make ends meet i'm sure for a large number of people that brings me to a question now that's uh, connected to the national education policy so the nep the national education policy has been described by many educationists as being an open attempt to reinforce the Varna caste system by qualifying the exit of the OBCs, Adivasis, Dalits, the children of minorities, though not explicitly, but we know who will be forced to exit the system first due to the existing uh, you know, circumstances in society. So what are your views on this? And uh, are these the preliminary telltale signs of the Hindu Rashtra that BJP wants to establish? You know, uh, they, there are one or two points which are of concern to me. You know, somebody tells a young person that, look, don't aspire for uh, huge things. You know, uh, Swadharma is much better. You know, if your father was a carpenter, you'd be a carpenter. You can learn things better. If your father or your family is, uh, you know, something... Uh, you know, you 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 carry on those professions. If you are if you're a weaver, you be a weaver. If you're a goldsmith, be a goldsmith. You know, wish for karma and all that kind of a thing. You know, this somehow has been an unstated rule for the Indian society for millennia. Although there are some people who try to justify this as uh, you know some sort of a division of labor. But, you know, as a as somebody who studied a bit of economics, I have not come across a division of labor anywhere which is defined by birth, one. Secondly, where you can't escape it, you know, you, 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 there is no upward <laughs> movement. You are, you are stuck yes. there. That, that's not division of labor. Yeah. That is not only, you see, uh, it is, it is not, a, not division of labor. Uh, it's imprisonment. It is. It's something like that. You know, um, it is division of laborers along caste lines. It's not division of labor. Now, this, this, having said that, now the new education policy, if it talks about, you know, skill development on those lines, it is very, very nefarious. 
very nefarious. I, I, I suspect that. And I do not want India to go back on to that road. And, you know, taken back to Middle Ages kind of a thing. I think, I, th I think our education system should be scientific. You know, I, you know, sometimes I wonder when during Corona, when the prime minister called for everybody to, you know, uh, bang the play, <laughs> the entire country, even yeah. young people did Light that. Because that that is because you see we have completely lost the scientific temper which was inculcated you know a generation or a couple of generations ago today you don't have that today you know it's a it's a very small thing where you know you it's a setting up of a mirror but then um, you call that surya tilak and and, <laughs> and, and, and people, awed by it. People think that, you know, there's something really divine in that. You know, it's been there. It's, it's, it's a small thing. <laughs> um, so, these are the things that, that are happening. And, um, you know, in order to reinforce this kind of a, um, ideology, thought process, and division of labor, and as you said, the, you know, Varnashtrama Dharma, and, and things like that. These are the little, little steps that the government and the regime is taking in order to push India back into that. And basically uh, fulfill their agenda of making India into a Hindu Rashtra, which has been there on their agenda for almost 100 years now, you know, sure. starting from the RSS. So connected to scientific temper, uh, society in general, but specifically more and more and prolifically amongst the youth, the scientific temper is being destroyed, uh, as you pointed out, based on myths, lies, pseudoscience, fakery, quackery, along with delusions of past civilizational grandeur. Uh, one of the many directives under our constitution uh, has been to in inculcate or develop scientific temper among our people. But we see this regime actively promoting a regression to uh, of our people, youth included, specifically through promotion of pseudoscience, asking questions, which is fundamentally important for developing scientific temper, has been made abhorrent under this regime. How far reaching would be the consequences of this, according to you? Quite far reaching. One, of course, I, I told you about during the corona what happened. That's one. The second thing is, where is it coming from? They, uh, our own prime minister, inaugurating or participating in a in a in a, in a hospital function, I think in your Mumbai, uh, had said, um, you know, uh, um, you know, Ganesh, look at Ganesh with. Without it's a, it's a human body and an elephant head, without some kind of a plastic surgery, how is it possible? Which means that in ancient times we had plastic surgery. And then he also <laughs> talked about, he also talked about uh, you know uh, IVF in in uh, say uh, the birth of Kauravas from the you know from pots and things like that. You know this and he. He repeated that after Mumbai, he repeated that in a scientific congress, science congress, and the, the entire crowd of uh, scientists assembled there, they all clapped. So that was the beginning of, you know, the slide down. But the other thing is much, which, which, which is concerned me much more was that, when was it? Sometime in 22, I think, uh, Lucknow bench of the High Court had referred a, a, a case of um, you know a dispute between a couple uh, to the Lucknow University astrology head of the department to f to ascertain <coughs> excuse me ascertain if uh, the lady is a is a Mangalya. I mean, was she married? Is she Manglik. Mangalik, yeah. Was she Mangalik? Yeah. 
So, and uh, directed the petitioners to submit her horoscope. It's the court saying. Now, this is where it is going. Um, so, and uh, on the other hand, you know, you had a lot of organizations which tried, try, striven to um, promote scientific temper. And they have become very inactive on the other hand. Yes. So yes. Uh, the conjunction or have been made inactive. Probably, yeah. You know, their funding and you know mm -hmm. their patronage and you know all that. You know, on the one hand, the regime's onslaught on the scientific temper, as the, the instances I told you. On the other hand, the withdrawal of the organizations which were working towards the promotion of scientific temper. These two. And you know. The regime and a lot of people, contemporary people, they confuse between science and technology. <laughs> so science is an inquiry. Yes. And the fruits of that inquiry can be used to do certain things. That is tech technology. Now, if you if you write a program, that's not science, that is technology. Now, yes. if yes. if I can invent something, you know, a motor or you know, maybe even uh, as the prime minister talks about the nalaka gas and all that, that is what that is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, they are uh, you know the planes uh, because of the cloud, the, the planes are the uh, the radars will not work. You know, that 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 people <laughs> is science today, and when the prime minister of the country talks about it. The, the general civil society doesn't say what is happening here. And we are in 2023, 2024. When he said that it was 2022, 23, and today we are in 2024. You know, instead of going forward, and you know, coupled with that, there is an active encouragement to past worshipping. You know, we had everything. Yes. You know, we had Yes. You know, I, I heard a very respected guru, very modern, of course, saying that, uh, you know, uh, we had uh, aeroplanes and uh, the, <laughs> name, the name Australia came from, you know, did you hear this? The name Australia came from, you know, after the end of the Mahabharata war, all the astras, the, the, the weapons of the Pandavas, were stored in an island. So the, the Astras were stored in an island, therefore that became Astralaya and then Australia. And, and you know, the oh. audience were invited to clap. You know, th these, these are the things that are wow. happening. Huh? So, so uh, you know, uh, th there's an onslaught and past worshipping. You know, if, if you had aeroplanes, you just gave it, gave, gave it up like that? I don't know what, what do we do with these aeroplanes? You know, we don't, there's no use. I don't know. <laughs> give it off. You know, give it up. <laughs> how how did how did a civilization which once had aeroplanes just like that gave it up? So and and yes. you know and you see on the one hand I'm jobless. On the other hand I'm desperate. I'm looking for some purpose in life. I don't see a purpose in life. Either I go to drug or I say, look, I'm great because my ancestors were great. You know, they had weapons. The Australia is nothing but this. And the entire thing was All my... All sense thing. of pride. All sense of pride and past worshipping. You know, these, yeah. are the, these are the raw material for the project that is in progress today. And what's, what's worse, uh, Prabhakar, is that... Um, when statements come from the prime minister himself, like the ones that he mentioned, or you know, the extra two AB or uh, global warming nahi ho rahi hai, hamari garmi ki sham, sehen karne ki shamta ghat gayi hai, you know, things like that. These statements coming from the highest person holding the highest office in the country uh, actually legitimizes quackery uh, and fakery you know, to such a I, large I, extent. My childhood, Dev, I remember. Uh, my elders that time, a hmm. lot of people were getting into BSc in the graduation, Bachelor of Science. 
and you know what they used to tell us i and and when i came for my uh, graduation pcom was very very popular bachelor of commerce mm. but the generation before me bsc was very popular because mm. you know when 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 i came to my graduation banking sector was opening up increasing and all that when but but you know before that was bsc and my elders used to say one generation before my uncles and my aunts and my elder sisters and their contemporaries used to say you know we opted for bsc because we heard jawarlal nehru and radha krishnan speak about science today yes. the prime minister doesn't speak about science the ruling dispensation doesn't speak about science our political leaders don't speak about science they speak about you know uh, ancient india we had that and we had this fine but today our young minds will have to be scientific minds yes so it's just basically obfuscating the reality of today and diverting attention to the past uh, rather than you know allowing people to very logically think about what they are going through which is a result of the actions of this regime so it's a very beautiful ploy of diverting attention um, last question uh, before we wind up um, what would be your message to the youth of india and civic society at large today um, should this regi regime lose and not hand over power forth uh, as is the worry of many in india myself <laughs> equally worried uh, they uh, because you see uh, this regime is trying everything from uh, you know the way they have interfered with the appointment of the election commissioners and election commission of india and uh, you know election commission of india therefore uh, doesn't object to the ruling party the prime minister uh, violating repeatedly even in a single day more than half a dozen violations of the model code of conduct and then uh, you know the, the way uh, surat uh, unanimous election happened and the way indoor was uh, almost uh, about to happen that way but then somehow it didn't uh, the way chandigarh election uh, took place in mayor election supreme court had to intervene no. you know, all these things put together it gives me a, a very strong indication that this regime doesn't want to go out of power of course they want they would like to remain in power but mainly because you know they have too many ugly skeletons in their cupboard starting from pegasus to rafael to pmks to you know uh, the the gap between uh, what their declared income is and what they've spent they, some people have uh, <laughs> computer About sixty thousand crores and you know, so many things. So even I mean, they would, they, they, I mean, there are some uh, doubts about the 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 functioning of the EVMs and all that. Even in spite of all that, even if they lose, they will not easily yield power to somebody and and quietly go away. That is my apprehension. I mean, I'm not trying to sound alarmist, but then it is in the realm of possibility. Now. if that is yes. the case i don't have much hope uh, uh, i i i much hope uh, in this uh, you know from uh, uh, the, the the traditional political parties i don't think mm. they are they are they are they're prepared to really you know stand up and say look what happened and all that kind of thing because they are they worried that you know um, they might be accused of uh, you know being a loo bad loser and all that kind of thing it is the civil society especially the young people who will, who will have to call this out and it is the civil society organizations which have to uh, network and organize a lot of people for this and is say that look you 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 declare what what is at every, at every phase you declare what is the gross voting in every constituency that's not being done that's percentages right. are being being uh, declared so we have to insist on that and then uh, compare and you know a lot of us uh, from the civil society will have to pressurize the political parties so that each political party gets that you know 17c or something like that 
where uh, exact uh, number of uh, votes sold in each booth and so that can be consolidated aggregating in each constituency this is the thing and that could be aggregated for the entire phase com you compare it with other political parties uh, the political parties will have to network and then declare and then let the election commission say no that is not correct and there is something else which has which, which is correct you know it, it has to be contested so at that level yes. as well as on the ground level, this needs to be taken up very, very seriously because this republic has to be saved. The republican values have to be saved. The diversity, liberalism, democracy, secularism, these things have to be saved. They are under severe threat as of today. If we, if we allow this regime to somehow or the other managed to come back to power or not leave power and stay put. Again, I'm not sounding alarmist, but I tell you, we will not have another general election free and fair. That's one. Second thing, let me say this also, having said this much, that every state is likely to suffer the fate of Manipur. Every state is likely to burn as Manipur is burning today. This regime will have to go. First of all, exercise your franchise. Go and convince people, tell them, look, this is what is happening in the country. And because it, it is much more at stake for you, young people, vote and then call out any fraud that is likely to happen. Only then can we save this democracy and secure it. What I clearly see, Prabhakar, why I specifically asked you this question, is that um, a lot of people my age, specifically, and even younger than me, um, they uh, are generally not interested in politics. Um, they don't understand the all pervasive nature of politics and how it affects their lives. And what doom it will spell for us, the youth of India, going forward if this regime comes back to power or holds on to power forcefully, um, because we are living, we are in the thick of it. You know, we are at the receiving end of everything, every policy decision of this regime. Um, that is something that the youth of India needs to understand. It's about our present and our future. So Please. with this. I thank you, Dr. Paragala Prabhakar, for taking the time and having this very important conversation with me. Um, it's, it has been a very worrying thing to see the youth of India uh, at the receiving end of what's been happening under this regime. So your very incisive uh, analysis and answers on the questions that I've put forth to you. Um, I really and truly salute you for your courage, first of all. And uh, for your uh, for the sheer amount of reading and research that you constantly do, uh, and uh, you know to present the most incisive insight uh, into what's happening with the country, and uh, lastly, of course, I'm very very honored and proud to call you a friend as well. So thank, thank you, you so much uh, for uh, doing this with us, and to all the viewers who have watched this today, I urge you to please share this with the young people in your families, no matter what their age is, whether they are teenagers, whether they are now into college, whether they are doing their, their masters, their PhD, or they've started working within their thirties, whoever is a young person, I urge you to share this with them so that they may think about what's happening to their country and take a little bit of interest uh, in politics going forward. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dave. Always a pleasure talking to you. <laughs> Wonderful. I think uh, the timing is okay. Matashto Vishesha video Kalanu Nodalu, Matu Hosa video Galabake Tirialu, Edina.com YouTube channel subscribe Madi, Matu bell icon click Madi.